He bought it off his brother. Well, he bought the business and the fixtures and fittings for £145. Which was obviously a fortune, one yeah. Yeah. Uh, No, actually, it was £113.13. Shillings. That's what it was. Yeah. What kind of a shop was it? He was a butcher repairer and his brother was. I remember you saying now, but I didn't realise where it yeah. was. Yeah. And um, it, his, his brother had lived there at one point, and honest to God, it was beautiful. Right. When I think back now, even the backyard was tiled red. Right. And they had this god, I mean, we had a lot of black iron patches, they had this lovely um, a tiled one, but it had, you know, the uh, like patch of lights on the wall, and flush doors, and you never had anything like that, not in the early 1940s. No. And when there was heavy bombing, you know, on the docks, his wife run off and she won't come back, she won't oh, go right. there. So they, they got a house on um, Victoria Avenue, well, shop on Victoria Avenue, oh, Hire Blake. But right. my dad actually worked for him, so he carried on working there and then he bought it off him, I think it was 1942. But we, right. by then we lived on Elizabeth yeah. Street. We did live with him for a while there like, on um, Victoria Avenue and I went back to try and find a shop because I, I, I mean I was only three when we moved into the, the last place like, so I, I can remember it being on a corner and having a shop, a, a big window on Victoria yeah. Avenue the one on the side and I can't remember the number now but I've got a bill head when my dad bought the shop so I know what number it was. Yeah. Right. But say it was one, two, three, it was like, you, know, you got up to about 110 or something like that, 111, and then there's a gap and a bit of grass and a tree, and then when you carry on, it's, it's gone beyond this. Right. Yeah. 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 So obviously built a new road or something. And yeah, and it was a tin shop open when parking there. to the Ritz, so Jimmy Savile was the manager. Oh, I remember the DJ. Yeah, yeah I remember and, all, and back again, and this Judith used to go with in her own Mercedes. Oh, um, like that we were going to school. Yeah. But she was great, you know. She, yeah. she had no edge to her life. I remember my first job was at the CIS. And we, we had a dance floor right on the yeah. top. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah Vince. Um, yeah. yeah. Didn't we go on from Westerns? And my house was there. I can't remember now. But so right on the top floor, the, the CWS yeah. had its own ballroom, oh, but nice. this was yeah. like where we had one of our lunch and yeah. But we used to go to the uh, the plaza and all the yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, we used yeah. to go to the plaza.
put absolutely no um, interest in anything that went on at school. Never ever went to a speech day or anything like that. And, I mean, I've never known my mother read a book in her life. She used to read like true romance or something like that in a magazine. That was it. And I don't ever remember my dad reading, to be honest. Uh, unless it was something to do with his business, you know. But my brother was an avid reader and he was 12 years older than me. So anything he read, I, like he brought in, I read because that, that was so all you got. Yeah, so yeah. I, I mean, he got married when I was 10. So before I was 10, and it was like the Wild of Worlds, the Road to Wigan Pier, you know, all that kind yeah. of stuff. But my dad drew the line at the theory of Marxism. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so all right. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Not for a self employed man. <laughs> yeah. But to stay in my mum. So my mum was born in 1924, she was the youngest of about seven, yeah. um, so there was just no, you know, just no way, there was obviously not all the help yeah. that people could. A mate of mine actually, I still see him. He lives down Skelmersdale now. But he, he was uh, he was hooked on it, gambling. Nearly nearly cost him his, his marriage and everything. He'd pick his wages up on a Friday night, straight to the dogs. Mm. And if he lost it, he lost it, you know, that was it. And he had a kiddie. He used to say, Sid, do you not think of Shirley and little Lorraine? He says, When I'm gambling, that's it. You know. He doesn't do it now. Yeah. But it took him many, many years to yeah. come to his senses. You were, you were just telling us about when they had runners down oh, the yeah. Well, I, I lived in uh, Lowcock Street, facing St. Clement's, and Sussex Street was the next street after that. And Fred Thompson's used to, his back door came to ours in the entry. Well, he was the local bookie in them days. And of course, he used to come up the entry and into the bookies, but they had a runner what they call a runner at the end and he, he used to dog out supposedly for the police you know and more them and every so often you know the police would come down and say you're being done on Tuesday or Wednesday Fred you know the runner would get arrested you know <laughs> go to court but well, it was here Bexley Square they go to Bexley Square they get done he paid a fine obviously the, uh, the bookie Fred had paid a fine and then that runner was done with then, because he's, he's been done. You know, he might go to another bookies then, you know. And he got, he got paid so much a week, like, for doing it. And he, uh, I just said to you, he used to have this tarpaulin on wood. And if it rained, he used to say, it's raining, Fred. You get it out, put it on the backyard wall onto the air aid shelter mm. to stop them getting wet while they was putting the bets on. You know what I mean? And, and he did, honestly. <laughs> 